What's good, y'all? Welcome to the Flex Zone on Fox Sports 1340 AM, the only place that gives you sports how you want it, when you need it. Go to our Facebook page, The Flex Zone. Follow us and comment on Twitter and Instagram at The Flex Zone 1. If you have any questions, ideas, or possibly want to be a guest, send us an email to TheFlexZone1 at gmail.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm your host, Andre Melton, joined by Byron and Cravante. Tonight, we'll be talking about Skip Bayless leaving ESPN. Byron, I'm going to start with you and ask you about the legacy of Skip Bayless. Wow. When you talk about sports personalities, top of the list, none other than Skip Bayless. He's been doing it since before I was born, before a lot of us were born in this room, covering, you know, the great Bulls teams, the great Cowboys teams, even up to today. Some of his memorable just (laughs) comments on LeBron. I know one of your favorites, Dre, is him and T.O., him getting into it with Richard Sherman stands out to me. And every day watching him and Stephen A, complete opposites of each other, but balancing it out, making it must-see TV no matter where you're at. Cravante? Talk about balance because uh, he is the polar opposite of Stephen A. Smith. And, you know, <laughs> he's definitely that guy who can get under a lot of people's skin really easily because of, you know what I'm saying, the teams he likes. Um, the team and the players and teams he doesn't like, you know what I'm saying? LeBron James for one, but I mean, what stands out to me is definitely the Tim Tebow thing. Like that whole year, he was riding Tebow the entire time, and I tell you, he was one of the few. It wasn't too many people riding for Tebow at the time because we know he can't throw. But there you go. Yet and still, every every week he would pound a pound a desk and say he's magical. He's a player. He's, He's a, a gamer, a baller, baller, shot caller. caller. And it was annoying, but I kept watching. I, I just kept watching. He has that. He has it. Uh, for me, what stood out was LeBron. I know the Tim Tebow one, the, the team obliterator, but his him going in on LeBron James, I think that's what solidified Skip Bayless as a household name. I mean, he was already a known journalist, but when he just went in on LeBron James, it made people tune in each and every week, and you were always curious to see when would LeBron finally prove Skip Bayless wrong. Uh, it happened after his first championship, but definitely this season as LeBron captured his third title. This was a sh- uh, Skip Bayless was a part of when it was originally called Pizza, Ooh. and his, uh, his debate partner back then was Woody Page. And then the show transitioned to First Take, and then his new debate partner became Stephen A. Smith. So, who do you think he had the better debates with, Skip Bayless? I mean, uh, Woody Page or Stephen A. Smith? Cavante, I'm gonna let you go ahead. Well, honestly, I, I'm not even lie to you. I don't even. I remember cold <laughs> pizza, but it's kind of vague. Then it came, became first, yeah, first and ten. First and ten. Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. That's when Stephen A. started making guest appearances once a week. Right. Right. And so I mean, I mean, and Stephen A. Smith is also the most recent one too. So. They've had classic, classic debates, and I remember the Cowboys being a part of a lot of them. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's Stephen it's Steve A. It's Stephen A. by far. What about you, Byron? Stephen A. by far. I'm speaking of more great moments, Dre, like this, where he talked about Mayweather, and he had to wear the oh, <laughs> money man. team shirt and hat, <laughs> and he yep. threw it off, you know, TMT. Then where he bet, and then Stephen A. had to wear the Cowboys jersey and hat. That was hilarious. On his birthday. On his birthday. It was was pretty, pretty good. And seeing them still, you know, with the host, the Curry Champions, and now Molly. It was was great must-see TV and something I'll definitely I'm actually glad that you said that, because now I want to get into his host. He's had Dana Jacobson, Jay Crawford, Cherry Campion, and now Molly uh, as, as host and moderators of the show before. So was there a particular host that you felt was able to kind of hone in the show and make it it make it what it was? I liked when they had Jay Crawford. That was when I really started getting into the show. But, I mean, when you go, for my personal reasons, you get Curry Champion, <laughs> <laughs> and then you get Molly. It's just like, how can you not, you know, enjoy what you're watching? You got, you know, attractive women that's talking about sports, and then you got the great content and just must-see box office blockbuster TV. It just, I think, only is getting better. I mean, you can't take away from Dana Jacobson either. She's yeah. a beautiful woman, too. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, Cavante. Man, I tell you, I, I really love the the Jay Crawford days because, I mean, I mean, I feel like that time, 
I was just really getting into, like really getting into sports. And I feel like Jay Crawford was really, he contributed every, every now and then. But, I mean, when you're talking about appealing to the eye, <laughs> I wasn't mad when he left. When else I saw the replacement, I can't lie to you. Carrie, Cham- Carrie Champion is a beautiful woman, and so is Molly. And they're really appealing. Like I think they went, went to the transition of let's appeal more to the eye. You know what I'm saying? Guys are already going to come, but more guys are going to come because we got Carrie Champion now. So, I mean, if we talking sports, we talk talking analytics and things like that, Jay Crawford, but – Carrie Champion was was a uh, a good uh, tennis analyst, so she can, she has a, she has a nice background. Yeah, I agree. I miss Jay Crawford because it was interesting to see when Jay Crawford would sometimes chime in on the discussions. But you you can't get mad when when you have Carrie Champion because I remember everybody was talking about yeah, have have y'all seen First Date? I'm like, yeah, I've seen First Date, but they talking about like the the host. No, right, right, right. The, the, every, the new the new moderator, yeah, right? And everybody chimed in for that one, but. Um, and Steph, um, she's, she was she's Miss and uh, Crawford. Uh, isn't he a Cleveland fan? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> oh, g- yeah. As a matter of fact, um, during the uh, goodbyes, that was one of the things he said to Skip. He said, "Now you have to like respect the king. You got to put some respect on Cleveland now, because <laughs> we got and and I and you know me, I stuck through it all. You know what I'm saying? I'm big up to Jay Crawford. Finally, his team finally getting over the the hump." Now, how will the show be moving forward without Skip Bayless? That's the question I think if we knew the answer to, we would kind of not be talking about it because we really don't know. And I don't even think they know as far as a producer. I'm sure they have an idea. They still have Stephen A. Smith signed. He's getting paid the big bucks to be who he is. But the question is, who do they bring in to kind of be that person of the next, I guess, filling for Skip because – well, it's probably going to end up happening over the next few days. You'll see various people fill in here and there. Right, right. So it'll be a trial and error period. But we really don't know. Because it takes a special kind of person to be and share the screen with Stephen A. Gravante? Um, I would say they're definitely going to um, they're definitely going to date. They're going to date a couple people before they actually commit because, man, those are some huge shoes to fill. And you need to have somebody who is still the polar opposite of Stephen A. Smith because it wouldn't be a debate show if you're always agreeing. So you gotta have somebody with a definitely an A person, uh, A alpha personality, but who's a little rough around the edges as well. I mean, is there anybody that comes to mind? You guys, it's a good question. Right uh, now, I don't know. I'm kind of stumped. I mean, I got, one, I, got one, I got, I got nothing. I mean, one person I've heard is um, Max from Sports Nation. I've heard a couple people. I think he's good way that though. Um, the the guy who fills in for uh for first take sometimes. Um, I can't remember. Uh, can't remember the guy's name, but I mean, th- those are a couple people who have, whose whose names have been. I mean, out. I mean, you can't. Gosh, so you can't just put anybody here. You gotta have somebody with some char- the same charisma. Like he brought a lot of intangibles to this show, and like like Byron said, they gonna they gonna go through their dating period before they find somebody. I I ain't got. I don't. I don't have anybody for you that has the same. You know what I'm saying? That's Skip Bayless. I don't, I don't have anybody for you. For the longest time, Skip Bayless was the show. Right. I mean, granted, you know, you brought Stephen A. on, but when Skip, to put, this was Skip's show. Skip debated a lot of people over the years. Uh, we've had people like Rob Parker, Shannon Sharp. We've had Darren Woodson. You've had Woody P- Woody Page come back on to debate him. So, it, I mean, you ha- we haven't seen Stephen A. versus whoever. So we've seen Skip be able to adapt and debate anybody. I mean, some of the classic ones were when he had guests such as uh, T.O. on, and they we were talking about that for years. Uh, he went in on T.O., calling him Team Obliterator, and then for him to actually be able to d- debate over his Hall of Fame status is, is epic, and it was must-see television for all of us. Um, Nelly has been on the show before. Yeah, he uh, he's had Wale, Wale Little say, Wayne. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, and Skip has really been able to de- debate anybody, pretty much over the years. So, um, what happened was today they had a lot of people say goodbye, such as Nelly, Tony Romo, his old coworkers, Jay, Cro- Jay Dana Jacobson, Jay Crawford, um, Darren Woodson. Was there any f- ha- uh, any thoughts on the final episode today? 
Um, I didn't get to see the entire episode, but I definitely got to see the the very the tail end, maybe the last eight minutes or so, and that was a good, that was a nice farewell. That was a really good farewell, and of course, him and Steven they are really close, and you know what I'm saying them embracing at the end really. This is good. This is a farewell. This is it, and I, I like how they send them off. Wow. Tony Romo was definitely one because you probably didn't think that these players pay attention to the media as much as they say they really don't pay attention to it. They really do, and you kind of see it here. Tony Romo, Dallas Cowboys. Kind of wish you would have saw the Cowboys get to that Super Bowl with Skip on first take just to see how he would have reacted and see how Stephen A. would react to it. Sadly, we didn't, so it would be interesting to see how that works moving forward. But as big as the Cowboys and his love for the Spurs as well, that was uh, real big as well. I mean, today the the final topics were – the, the most heated ones, uh, such as LeBron and Jordan comparison, Kevin Durant, free agency, Tim Tebow, uh, Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Tom Brady, and Deflategate, Andrew Luck, or RG3. Uh, was there any debate that Skip, it, that Skip had that really stood out to you guys? <laughs> A lot of good ones. <laughs> yeah, A lot yeah. of good ones. I mean, for me, I I think the the biggest one for me was Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao when that fight actually finally happened, and his and then Skip had to actually wear the the TMT gear. That that's the one for me because for the longest time, Skip was calling Floyd a chicken, you know, clucking at him, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean he was going in on Floyd and saying how this is the one person who who was going to defeat Floyd, and you know Stephen A was actually right. Saying that Floyd would would school him, and he did. Mm, I th- probably, th- I'm gonna stick to mine. Tim Tebow, just <laughs> week in and week out, man. It was it was musty TV because it's like, all right, I'm waiting for Tim Tebow to lose so I can see what Skip Bayless would say, but he kept winning. It was just and it was crazy how he won. Like, it it was just I I couldn't wait the next morning. I couldn't wait to you know to after the Sunday or whatever that Monday to see. What this man has to say now, but I was, but he didn't lose. So, I mean, him dude, throughout that entire year, I think I believe it was about a stretch of eleven games. So, what's that? Eleven weeks of just him, just him going at how great that he thought Tim Tebow was, and Stephen A. Smith just, just looking at him <laughs> like, "Are you serious? Like, are we really doing this right now?" It's great. That's all you. Could, <laughs> that's all you could do with that, Byron. The tandem talk NFL topics about the Cowboys, even the stories of when he covered the Bulls with Michael Jordan and how when Michael Jordan was retired and came to, to practice and beat players one-on-one with a sweatsuit on, just hearing inside stuff like that. Just Skip, you know, showing his versatility of covering all sports. And just hearing him talk, you know, when, when uh, <laughs> he would like, when Stephen A. Smith would talk about Dirk Jeter and, you know, Aaron Rodgers and called him a bad man and how Skip would just rebuttal. And even, I think, Cole Piece of Day, I think he wore, like, a LeBrick shirt and was shooting with the brick. Yeah, just yeah, funny yeah, stuff. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, remember yeah. uh, any, any final thoughts, though, about Skip? Because we, we all know that he's moving on to the Fox, Fox. Sports family. Is it going to be a shelf with him? That's or? what I'm I don't know. I don't know what the implications are. I don't think anybody's is. sure for sure about what's going to happen with Skip and his, his role with Fox Sports, but... Uh, we know he'll be a big, major part. I don't even watch Fox Sports. I was gonna say, yeah, I don't even watch Fox bringing, Sports, but I'll watch him. And see, that's the thing. We bring it, Fox Sports is bringing eyes to the, to that product now. Thanks. But um, I think the first tape will definitely miss him, and it won't be the same. All right, y'all. Well, this was our special on Skip Bayless. Make sure y'all tune into Fox Sports 1340 AM. The Flex Zone catch us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. The only place you can get sports how you want it, when you need it. Make sure you come out to our live broadcast July 14th at 7 p.m. Uh, the Flex Zone. Don't forget to like our Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Flex Zone 1. If you have any questions, ideas, or possibly want to be a guest, send an email to TheFlexZone1 at gmail.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tonight, our show is executively produced by Andre Melton, our senior producer, Kevante Hurd, uh, and also our host and moderator tonight was me, Andre Melton. Our videographers are Sophia, Dwayne Allen, and Hugh Scott. We want to thank Ty as our engineer, and like that, Byron, we gone. <laughs>